Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this redgamingtech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. I'm not on camera today because, quite frankly, I got started filming really late, thanks to uh, cat sitting, of all things. But I'm here now, despite my late start, and by golly gosh, I'm actually kind of happy that I did start late because there is so much tech news that has actually emerged over the past few hours alone. So we're going to start with a couple of AMD things, the first of which is the third generation of Threadripper, and it's also known as Sharktooth. This is also an article if you prefer the written word, and of course you can find that linked in the description of this video. So we'll start with a bonus titbit. Did you know that Threadripper slash X399 was not actually originally planned by AMD. Instead, it was actually a passion project that a group of engineers were working on in their spare time. So originally, the Zen CPU cores were uh, being created for Ryzen, for Epic, and obviously APUs and some other bits and pieces, but AMD had not been planning to release HEDT or X399, but eventually management kind of liked the idea and well here we are and obviously the x399 platform has proven to be rather popular so a couple of benchmarks on geekbench have actually uh, popped up over the internet and these were first discovered by momomo on twitter and these results are actually really impressive but first of all the ID of the processor isn't particularly super helpful. It's known as Sharktooth, as I mentioned, and the identifier is AMD, or authentic AMD, let me be precise, Family 23 Model 49 Stepping Zero, so that clears things up rather well. The Level 3 cache is being identified as 16 megabytes times 8, which is precisely what you would anticipate Geekbench to uh, read a Zen 2 uh, based Threadripper processor at, particularly when it's got 32 cores and 64 threads. The clock frequency for this CPU is 3.6 gigahertz, so that's 600 megahertz higher than the um, second generation X399 CPU, the 2990W uh, X. And as for the results, well there are two entries here, both were uh, tested on the 13th of August, or, or August the 13th, whichever way you prefer. Uh, starting things with the top result, we have a single core score of 5,677, with a multi-core score of 94,772. The second result has a slightly higher single core score at 5,932, but a lower multi-core score, which is 93,344 points. We also see the system is loaded with 128 gigabytes of the memories, which basically gives you enough for a really good workstation uh, or 3D modeling system. You could also run about maybe six or seven Chrome tabs on that, which is pretty nice. The memory bandwidth flow also caught my eye. It is much faster than the second or first generation uh, Threadripper platform. The memory bandwidth of one of the results, the fastest result, for multi-core is 54.8 gigabytes per second, and the copy score with, once again, multi-core is 31.3. I actually did a quick bit of checking, and the fastest result I could find with the second generation processor, the 2990WX, which obviously also has 32 cores, the result of that was 5,421, the multi-score was 82,678, but this was highly overclocked, but the main reason I'm bringing this up is because the memory bandwidth was just 38.5 gigabytes for multi-core, and the copy was just 20 gigabytes per second. It's very difficult to know why these results are so much higher with the, sec with the third generation, excuse me, but most likely we are looking at the benefit of the I.O. controller. Uh, we've actually seen, of course, AMD now formally release diagrams of the 7002 EPIC processors 
aka ROM, and obviously because all of the CPU cores tie directly into the I.O. module, and then though they then link into the DDR4 memory channels, well, it reduces latency, increases memory bandwidth available to the processor cores, blah, 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 blah. What isn't yet clear is how many memory channels are available for the third generation of uh, Threadripper processors. I've heard a couple of people say it's only four, so quad memory, exactly identical to the second generation, and others have said it's not, it's actually the same as ROM. Unfortunately, I don't have a leak on that. I have been told, though, by a very good source that we will be seeing up to 64 cores from the information that he had which was uh, current as of maybe a couple of months ago. I did cover that more in depth in a separate video. Um, so either way, I do suspect that this next generation of uh, Ryzen Threadripper processors is going to be really impressive. And for people who need uh, 64 processor cores, well, by golly gosh, you're going to be in really good luck. Next up, AMD and the... Mm, somewhat less exciting uh, low-end low OEM Radeon 600 series. And no, this is not an RDNA-based GPU with a very small number of compute units, so don't get too excited. Instead, take a guess what it is. Go on, take a guess. That's right, it's another Polaris refresh. Isn't that super exciting? These are mostly focused on OEM desktops and also mobile Radeon as well. So we have the RX 640, although anything below 640 does not have the RX uh, suffix. So we have the Radeon 630, the 625, the 620, and finally the 610. The RX 640 is actually the RX 550X again and it has up to 10 compute units and it's also outfitted with 64-bit memory <laughs> that's not me screwing up there literally a memory bus width of 64-bit and that is running at a blazing speed of 7 gbps as much as i'm being a little sarcastic with my voice here obviously these gpus are not designed for high you know, resolution gaming, you're not going to be playing at, uh, you know, 4K at 60 FPS. In fact, you'll be lucky if you're running at 4 pixels at 60 FPS with some of these uh, GPUs. And obviously, AMD are just trying to make the best of the parts they've already produced. The RX 640 and the, R and the Radeon 630, which is based on the 540X, are the Polaris GPUs, which of course are the GCN for architecture and then we have the 625 which is running with uh the topaz architecture and it's unconfirmed yet but it looks like radeon 610 is using oland so those the the 625 and below though are for laptops and the launch date is well now <laughs> So, yeah, this was definitely one of those launches that AMD kind of slipped under the radar. This was definitely not a, uh, you know, a high-profile release. That that's, that's the word I was looking for. It is definitely not a high-profile release. Next piece of news, and we can't talk about AMD, apparently, without Intel recently. And there are actually some updates concerning Intel's processor lineup. Although, at the moment, as of the time I'm recording this... It's a little ambiguous what we're looking at here. So it is uh, being identified as a Dell Inc. Precision 5820 Tower. The single core score, that whenever I say that, it kind of reminds me of like, you know, uh, the, old, uh, the old way of speaking and saying dates. Something like seven score years ago or something like that. Anyway, maybe that's just me. Anyway, this, uh, this uh, benchmark was uploaded today, which is, once again... August the 14th and is identified as a Dell Inc. Precision 5820 uh, tower. The single core score 5468 with the multi score uh, being just a shade under 40,000, 39,820 to be precise. It also appears to have 128 gigabytes of memory. I'm not quite sure what's going on with the 
130,758 megabytes of DDR4S RAM, uh, which is running at 1464, although of course you need to take into consideration DDR there. And anyway, the CPU is being identified as Intel 0000. This is an engineering sample processor, in case you couldn't tell. It has 10 cores, which of course, thanks to SMT, is 20 threads, and is a genuine Intel Family 6 Model 85 Stepping 7. The base frequency is 3.4 GHz, but the maximum frequency is being listed at 4.6 GHz, which is not super fast, but not super slow. So the clock frequency of 4.6 GHz does actually equal the same uh, clock frequency as another CPU that we actually spotted, um, which is possibly potentially the same one, which is a Cascade Lake X slash Glacier Falls engineering sample. It is 10 cores and 20 threads again. This one, however, was on Syssoft Sandra, and it had a uh, clock frequency of up to 4.6 gigahertz. Um, and this was actually spotted recently, although we've actually had a couple of Glacier Falls processors. The only head scratcher here, though, is that not only does it identify as a Skylake X codename, but the package is on a socket LGA1151, which would obviously indicate a mainstream platform. So obviously something is being misidentified here, particularly the level 3 cache is also a bit weird, a bit hinky, and of course the memory itself is being a bit hinky. So clearly something is just not right with this ES, uh, and it is an engineering sample. So if I had to put a, you know, if I had to throw kind of a dart at a guess, it would actually be that this is uh, Glacier Falls slash uh, Cascade Lake X, which is obviously the HEDT platform. So Intel are doing some testing here. The outside possibility is that Geekbench is just like panicking and it's actually Comet Lake, but the clock frequency doesn't look right to me and also the fact it's been identified as Skylake X and, well, just a few other bits looks kind of suspicious. Then again, it's an engineering sample, so because it's A, not being identified correctly, and B, engineering samples don't exactly have the best track record with the final retail frequency, you need to take that into consideration. In fact, uh, CPU manufacturers don't even want reviewers quite frequently to even test with reviews with uh, close to final engineering sample uh, processors. Uh, they, they really don't. They want you to have retail sample processors. In fact, even if a motherboard vendor has a very late engineering sample or a qualification sample, quite frequently uh, uh, CPU vendors do not want you as a reviewer to test with those simply because there can be a little bit of a difference in like boost behavior or whatever. So obviously when we're looking at quite early um, uh, engineering sample, I don't know why I'm having difficulty remembering the term engineering sample. You can tell my brain's fried, can't you? Uh, anyway, yeah, when you're looking at uh, quite early engineering sample processes, then obviously clock frequency can be kind of screwed up. So yeah, it's going to be really fascinating to see exactly what this turns out to be. And I'm going to be very interested to see what Intel, when finally Comet, Comet Lake, excuse me, does launch, will be charged at. With all of that said, though, hopefully... You've enjoyed the video, so if you did, normal stuff, like, share, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care, bye for now.